Hi there. Welcome back, my friend, and I'm glad you've joined me for day number 255. Did you realize that yesterday God told us how to enter His kingdom, and not only that, how to be great in His kingdom? We have more treasures today. We're going to read Hosea 6, 7, and 8, our first reading in Proverbs 24, and the second half of Matthew 5. Let's turn to Hosea 6. In yesterday's reading, Hosea bought back his wife from prostitution, and the Lord drew analogies in his speech to Israel. Hosea 6, Heading, The People's Insincere Repentance The people say, Let's return to the Lord. He has hurt us, but he will be sure to heal us. He has wounded us, but he'll bandage our wounds, won't he? In two or three days he will revive us, and we will live in his presence. Let us try to know the Lord. He will come to us as surely as the day dawns, as surely as the spring rains fall upon the earth. But the Lord says, Israel and Judah, what am I going to do with you? Your love for me disappears as quickly as morning mist. It is like dew that vanishes early in the day. That is why I have sent my prophets to you with my message of judgment and destruction. What I want from you is plain and clear. I want your constant love not your animal sacrifices. I would rather have my people know me than burn offerings to me. As soon as they entered the land of Adam, they broke the covenant I had made with them. Gilead is a city full of evil people and murderers. The priests are like a gang of robbers who wait in ambush for someone. Even on the road to the holy place at Shechem, they commit murder and they do all this evil deliberately. I have seen a horrible thing in Israel. My people have defiled themselves by worshiping idols. As for you, people of Judah, I have set a time to punish you also for what you are doing. Hosea 7 Whenever I want to heal my people Israel and make them prosperous again, all I can see is their wickedness and the evil they do. They cheat one another, they break into houses and steal, they rob people in the streets. It never enters their heads that I will remember all this evil, but their sins surround them, and I cannot avoid seeing them. Heading, Conspiracy in the Palace The Lord says, People deceive the king and his officers by their evil plots. They are all treacherous and disloyal. Their hatred smolders like the fire in an oven, which is not stirred by the baker until the dough is ready to bake. On the day of the king's celebration they made the king and his officials drunk and foolish with wine. Yes, they burned like an oven with their plotting. All night their anger smoldered, and in the morning it burst into flames. In the heat of their anger they murdered their rulers. Their kings have been assassinated one after another, but no one prays to me for help. Heading, Israel and the Nations The Lord says, The people of Israel are like a half-baked loaf of bread. They rely on the nations around them and do not realize that this reliance on foreigners has robbed them of their strength. Their days are numbered, but they don't even know it. The arrogance of the people of Israel cries out against them. In spite of everything that has happened, they have not returned to me, the Lord their God. 
Israel flits around like a silly pigeon. First her people call on Egypt for help, and then they run to Assyria. But I will spread out a net and catch them like birds as they go by. I will punish them for the evil they have done. They are doomed. They have left me and rebelled against me. They will be destroyed. I wanted to save them, but their worship of me was false. They have not prayed to me sincerely, but instead they throw themselves down and wail as the heathen do. When they pray for grain and wine, they gash themselves like pagans. What rebels they are! Even though I was the one who brought them up and made them strong, they plotted against me. They keep on turning away from me to a God that is powerless. They are as unreliable as a crooked bow. Because their leaders talk arrogantly, they will die a violent death, and the Egyptians will laugh. Hosea chapter 8 Heading, The Lord Condemns Israel for Idol Worship The Lord says, Sound the alarm. Enemies are swooping down on my land like eagles. My people have broken the covenant I made with them and have rebelled against my teaching. Even though they call me their God and claim that they are my people and that they know me, they have rejected what is good. Because of this, their enemies will pursue them. My people chose kings, but they did it on their own. They appointed leaders, but without my approval. They took their silver and gold and made idols for their own destruction. I hate the gold bull worshipped by the people of the city of Samaria. I am furious with them. How long will it be before they give up their idolatry? An Israelite craftsman made the idol, and it is not a god at all. The gold bull worshipped in Samaria will be smashed to pieces. When they sow the wind, they will reap a storm. A field of grain that doesn't ripen can never produce any bread. But even if it did, foreigners would eat it up. Israel has become like any other nation and is as useless as a broken pot. Stubborn as wild donkeys, the people of Israel go their own way. They have gone off to seek help from Assyria and have paid other nations to protect them. But now I am going to gather them together and punish them. Soon they will writhe in pain when the emperor of Assyria opposes them. The more altars the people of Israel build for removing sin, the more places they have for sinning. I write down countless teachings for the people, but they reject them as strange and foreign. They offer sacrifices to me and eat the meat of the sacrifices. But I, the Lord, am not pleased with them, and now I will remember their sin and punish them for it. I will send them back to Egypt. The people of Israel have built palaces, but they have forgotten their own Maker. The people of Judah have built fortified cities, but I will send fire that will burn down their palaces and their cities. Now let's turn to Proverbs 24. Here are favorite verses from today's reading. Verses 5 and 6. Being wise is better than being strong. Yes, knowledge is more important than strength. After all, you must make careful plans before you fight a battle, and the more good advice you get, the more likely you are to win. Proverbs 24 
Don't be envious of evil people, and don't try to make friends with them. Causing trouble is all they ever think about. Every time they open their mouth, someone is going to be hurt. Homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. Where there is knowledge, the rooms are furnished with valuable, beautiful things. Being wise is better than being strong. Yes, knowledge is more important than strength. After all, you must make careful plans before you fight a battle, and the more good advice you get, the more likely you are to win. Wise sayings are too deep for stupid people to understand. They have nothing to say when important matters are being discussed. If you are planning evil, you will earn a reputation as a troublemaker. Any scheme a fool thinks up is sinful. People hate a person who has nothing but scorn for others. If you are weak in a crisis, you are weak indeed. Don't hesitate to rescue someone who is about to be executed unjustly. You may say that it is none of your business, but God knows and judges your motives. He keeps watch on you. He knows, and He will reward you according to what you do. My child, eat honey. It's good. And just as honey from the comb is sweet on your tongue, you may be sure that wisdom is good for the soul. Get wisdom and you have a bright future. Don't be like the wicked who scheme to rob honest people or to take away their homes. No matter how often honest people fall, they always get up again. But disaster destroys the wicked. Don't be glad when your enemies meet disaster, and don't rejoice when they stumble. The Lord will know if you are gloating, and He won't like it, and then maybe He won't punish them. Let's return to Matthew 5. Yesterday we read the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, including the famous and memorizable Beatitudes. We also heard the first instance of, You have heard it said, but I say. Matthew 5, starting at verse 27. You have heard that it was said, Do not commit adultery. But now I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman and wants to possess her is guilty of committing adultery with her in his heart. So if your right eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. It is much better for you to lose a part of your body than to have your whole body thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and throw it away. It's much better for you to lose one of your limbs than to have your whole body and go off to hell. It was also said, Anyone who divorces his wife must give her a written notice of divorce. But now I tell you, if a man divorces his wife for any cause other than her unfaithfulness, then he is guilty of making her commit adultery if she marries again. And the man who marries her commits adultery also. You have also heard that people were told in the past, Do not break your promise, but do what you have vowed to the Lord to do. But now I tell you, do not use any vow when you make a promise. Do not swear by heaven, for it is God's throne. 
nor by earth, for it is the resting place for his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not even swear by your head, because you cannot make a single hair white or black. Just say, yes or no, anything else you say comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap your left cheek too. And if someone takes you to court to sue you for your shirt, let him have your coat as well. And if one of the occupation troops forces you to carry his pack one mile, carry it two miles. When someone asks you for something, give it to him. When someone wants to borrow something, lend it to him. You have heard that it was said, Love your friends, hate your enemies. But now I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may become the children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun to shine on bad and good people alike, and gives rain to those who do good and to those who do evil. Why should God reward you if you love only the people who love you? Even the tax collectors do that. And if you speak only to your friends, have you done anything out of the ordinary? Even the pagans do that. You must be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father and our Savior and Lord, Christ Jesus, how imperfect we are. We only love the people who show love to us. We don't give to people who ask us to help them. We don't lend to people without having them sign a contract. We would never think of helping someone who is just taking advantage of us. We certainly would never let our adversary slap us the second time. We break our promises, little ones and big ones, such as breaking marriage vows. And we ought to rip out both our eyes because we can't stop lusting for people and even things that we see. If you wanted to prove that we're hopeless sinners, Lord, you have succeeded. How short we come when measured by these standards. Our attempts at right living are no more sincere than the repentance of the people of Israel in Hosea 6. Lord Jesus, you proved that we need a Savior. Holy Spirit, we beg your help also. We bow before you, Lord, desiring true and sincere repentance. Please forgive us as we confess our wrongs and sins.